Hey there, Wargamers, Justin or Paint here, and today we're going to talk about airbrushes. Hey there, Battletech and hobbyists, hobby fans, Justin here, and today, as the intro said, we're going to be getting into airbrushing. Now, uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking about um, the airbrush itself, not necessarily techniques, but the airbrush. Uh, if you are uninitiated and you are new, I'm going to go through the ins and outs of this so that you understand, hopefully, so that maybe this won't be as daunting for you if you're going to get into it. So, with that being said, let's rotate on over here today, and I'll show you my main airbrushes and give you some explanations about what I do, how I use it, and how I maintain it. All right, guys, so if you watched my previous video where I broke down tools, you've seen this before. If you skipped that video, if you haven't seen it, uh, this is my go bag um, for work where I transport my airbrushes back and forth to work. So these are my three primary airbrushes. Now I've got some other ones as well. Uh, I've got a Sotar 2020 here. Uh, it's nice and dusty. I, I don't use it that often. It is a good brush. I just don't use it often. Um, and I've got a Creo something or other and, and two Harder and Steinbecks that I don't use that much. But these are my workhorses uh, that I take around. And honestly, uh, you could get away with just one of them. I take the other two, I think, mostly just to take them. Um, these two are basically the same, just one's got a smaller cup. Uh, so if I'm doing a lot of painting, precision painting with a lot of paint, I use that. If I'm doing real delicate stuff with just a little paint, I'm switching quickly, I'll use the small reservoir here. But that being said, let's go ahead and zoom in, and I'll give you guys a breakdown of the anatomy here of these brushes so you understand, if you aren't familiar, um, what's going on. Now, if you know about airbrushing, this is probably going to be nothing new to you. Uh, if you are new, buckle up. we got some things to talk about. Uh, so first and foremost, my, all my airbrushes here are outfitted with quick detaches. Um, let's use one of these here. Um, this right here just threads on. We've got some Teflon tape uh, to help with the seal. And this is nice when you have multiple airbrushes so that you can rotate between them quickly. So here's the end of my hose, and you'll probably hear a little um, noise. Yep. And then we're off to airbrushing. Uh, if I want to switch between colors quickly, pop. And here we go. Boom. Ready to go. Uh, this is not required, but this setup with these two is not very expensive to get that added onto your airbrush setup and your compressor. And if you're going to get multiple airbrushes, I recommend it. If you're only going to have one airbrush, here's why I recommend having one. If you have a direct thread, uh, so let's pretend for a moment this is a direct thread, right? So that's on there. You set this down on your desk, uh, or, or excuse me, if you're done painting or you need to step away, you got to set this somewhere, right? Um, you can pop the detach put this on your stand, and then lay this down and walk away. I can't tell you how many times, even with this, that I have put it on the stand with the quick detach and caught this with my foot or I've rolled over it with my chair because I'm an idiot um, and I want to quickly do something or I need to answer the door for the Amazon guy, insert whatever, and caught this, right? And then it pulls it off. And then not only am I spilling paint potentially, which this has a cap, which is helpful, but not only could you spill paint, um, more, more importantly, you could damage your needle because this falls off the desk. If you have a hardwood floor, it bangs the needle, bends it, messes it up, uh, and that's no good. If you have a carpeted floor, that still happens. So uh, I highly recommend this. Um, I, I don't think it's more than like 20 bucks to get these together uh, to thread on here. And that's just, it's convenient. Um, and then you don't have to unscrew anything. And then when you're done, you can just pop that, wind the coil this up, put it with your compressor, and then put your airbrush up. So that's something I think is worth doing. Even better if you have multiple airbrushes. So, anatomy of our airbrush here. Uh, first and foremost, I've got a metal cap on mine. Uh, and uh, let me zoom in here so you guys can see um, what all is going on. Um, first of all, you might be worried that you might jam the needle with this. Pretty sure it sets far enough forward it won't, but you'll notice, if you can see there, no needle protruding. This is probably the first tip I would give anyone who's got an airbrush. No matter what's going on, how frustrated you are trying to learn to use it, when you store it, always clean it out. Do not allow paint to dry in here. I promise you, you will hate yourself if you do that. Um, it's going to suck trying to clean it out. It's better to spend five minutes cleaning this at the end of a session than now we're cleaning it before your next session. So make the decision. Please clean the internals. The outside of mine's gotten pretty grimy uh, with paint, but the inside is pretty clean. So that is pretty important. Second big thing. This does come off. Uh, I always keep this on. My boss doesn't. I keep this on to protect this so I don't bend it. If this gets bent, it's not the end of the world. The front is more important, but I keep it on because uh, I like it. It helps protect this. And also, I like having that weight here uh, so it makes it less front heavy for me. Some people like to take it off because they don't like that back there. So 
Uh, you got the needle check here, or at least that's what I call it. And we're going to loosen this. This is going to allow our needle to move, right? And now if you look at my, my web of my hand closely, needle forward, needle back. So I always store it. I'll, when I'm done, I'll pull back ever so slightly, no needle, tighten that down. So now no matter what happens, no matter if this cap goes flying and this flies across the room, your needle is protected. If this gets bent, that sucks, but you're fine. You can kind of bend it back and you're okay. If your needle gets bent, you can try and fix it, but it will only be good for some stuff. Your, your spray is not going to be even. You get spattering. Your spray will be off to the, the side, and it's just it's no good. So I highly recommend cleaning when you're done, and then pull your needle back and tighten the chuck at the end so your needle is always uh, protected, whether you have a cap or not. Uh, I don't think Badger supplies metal caps anymore. You get these rubbery ones. So um, let's go ahead and dissect our airbrush here. Okay. So loosen the needle chuck, needle comes out, be very careful. Now this one's got a larger needle, so it's not quite as delicate. Um, so it's uh, this right here is not quite as thin. I think this is the 0.7. I like this for slinging some paint. Um, this normally comes with a 0.5, I believe. I have the 0.7 for throwing a lot of paint. 0.5 is great, 0.3 is good for detail. So we'll set that down here. Now this whole um, contraption here comes out. We're gonna try and loosen that and it's tight. So. Um, if you have a more premium airbrush, you might use a piece of leather uh, or felt or something um, to protect this from being damaged by the teeth. Uh, I'm not as worried. I just need a little, a little uh, tension and we're going to twist. There it goes. That was enough to loosen it. Uh, you'll notice on my front here, my cap's kind of banged up from where I've used pliers over the years to get it loose. Um, that's mostly because paint starts to dry on it and that is normal. But if you have a really nice one, you might use something that's less destructive. So we're going to loosen this. And hopefully this will um, remove some mysticism. Is that, so, is that the right word? I don't know. It, it'll remove some of the fears with the airbrush. This is going to be really hard to damage this. Don't be afraid to play with it uh, if you get one. Um, it's better for you to understand how your tool works. right? So there is your trigger. And this is the little thing in the back that helps like rock the trigger. It gives you like the kind of... It allows it to, to give it like... it. I don't know how to describe it. Um, it sits against this. Uh, so when you're pulling the trigger back, it kind of rocks and that's what gives you the kind of smooth trigger motion. So that piece, if you don't have that in there, you'll notice, uh, when you go to pull the trigger, it's going to be wild. Um, down here, I generally don't pull this off. This is where your air, like air regulator deal is here and your need or your uh, trigger is going to sit down on top of that. And when it's seated, you'll feel like a spring. Boop, 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 boop. And when you push down, air comes out. When you let up, the spring pushes forward and, uh, closes the valve, no air. So, um, cap right Let me zoom out just a smidge for you guys um and keep all the tools or all the parts here and in, in focus all right so front comes off this is usually two parts okay and if you ever want to switch needles remember you're gonna most likely have to change the nozzle um, assembly as well because this and this are paired this is what the needle goes into and this is the reservoir this sits in and allows the paint to flow out um, these do not always match every needle um, or, or, or different needles, so they're usually paired with the size. So if you ever switch it, you need more than just a needle, you need a replacement um, nozzle as well. Now, um, that is generally the complete disassembly for this airbrush. You should not generally have to take that apart. You shouldn't have to do anything else. There is a little seal in here. Uh, you shouldn't have to take that out. These used to ship with a little seal here, but they find, found that that doesn't do anything, so they generally don't have that anymore. So that is the complete disassembly or field strip of your airbrush, at least this one. The other ones are going to be similar. My Harder and Steinbeck similar. Um, the way they operate is going to be very similar. So um, one of the things I think is worth pointing out is if you are getting into airbrushing and you're struggling, let's zoom in, let's see. All right, so these two, um, if you're having issues with airflow, uh, you can pop this part off. And again, if you're going to check this because you're having problem with paint coming out, uh, retract the needle first. You don't want to pull this off while the needle's forward because you might bend it. Um, but once it's back, you're fine. This will sit down in here. And if it was in your airbrush, it's going to look like that, right? So um, if you are having issues with uh, paint coming out, one of the things to check first and foremost is the front, right? This spot right here, that hole, it's got this little brass uh, nozzle that sits down in it. You can see that now, right? Sometimes paint gets around that hole and it dries around this little nozzle piece. 
So sometimes you have to get in here with a, a paintbrush, the stiff one, and um, uh, remove that and then start jamming on that with a little bit of alcohol or something to get it loose, clean it, wipe it, and then reaffix it. That's the first thing that I normally notice people having issues with, the first thing I have. So sometimes I'll just go straight to that. The other issue you'll have is if that doesn't work, you remove that, drop it on the floor like a dummy, boom. Uh, that's another thing. <laughs> if you're taking apart your airbrushes, it's also worth that having like a little tray. So if they fall, you don't lose them. These are pretty delicate, especially um, some of the parts in these airbrushes. They're really tiny up here and they can get lost. Like this is reasonably big. The piece in that other one is probably like, it's probably like that much that shows. It's very tiny. It's like that little bit and it's easy to get lost and then it's frustrating. Uh, so anyway, if, you, if that doesn't clear the clog, flip it over and you can look inside. Sometimes paint gets stuck on the underside down in there. You can get in there with a paintbrush and kind of uh, scrape at it and get it loose, clean it out, and then sometimes down in here, clean that off. And then usually that gets like 99% of my cloggages handled. Uh, for reassembly, we got that together. We're going to seat this. Uh, always do this before the needle. Always do this stuff before the needle. You don't want to be sliding this over the needle and bending it. So sit that in. And when you're disassembling, uh, oh, back up before you assemble. Another area for paint. Sometimes there's paint that gets stuck down in here on this nozzle. So you can use a little bit of alcohol and you can rub that off. This is reasonably fine, um, but a little bit of rubbing alcohol helps. So anyway, we'll come in here, knock stuff around like a dummy. We'll seat that, put that down on top. And I find that a firm like hand crank is good. You don't have to use pliers, just a hand crank. So like, boom, boom, boom. That's pretty good. That should hold you. Now, uh, for the other reassembly, we'll get to that in a moment. I do want to talk about this part here. Uh, so this is only going to go, generally all of them are going to be very similar. It's only going to go one way. So as you can, I can rotate this and that won't move. I can turn it. There we go. So like that doesn't, now it does. There is a spring in here and this is what allows your trigger to move. All right, so we've got a little um, chuck right here as well. This, when you loosen it, uh, relieves tension on the spring and it makes this uh, much softer, right? It's like, cause the spring's not constricted. And then you can get in here. I like to have mine all the way down. So I've got a little bit, uh, a little bit tougher of a spring to, to push against. I like, I like the forward, it's under tension, so it pushes forward with a certain pressure that I like. But if you want to loosen that so your trigger's a little smoother to your liking, this right here also turns. And that's the thing that if you're disassembling at least the Badger, um, some of the other airbrushes are a little different on this front, um, but they'll all be similar. But in the Badger, because this is right here next to that, if you want to remove this, you got to pinch both, and this is the thread that you're trying to rotate. Sometimes you're going to do it and you catch this when it gets real loose. And if you loosen that completely, this comes apart and the spring comes out. Not the end of the world, but putting back together something that you would have to, to fiddle with. Um, so we'll put uh, this partially back in. So what I usually do is I'll go all the way forward till I feel it. You'll feel it. You won't be able to really crank. So that's forward. I'll pull that back. Uh, you can leave it a little loose, but I'll pull it back some and I'll hold my fingers. So fingers here, holding that back. This goes in, curve to the rear. If I can get that back out here, it's, yeah. There we go. Sorry, it had fallen weird. So curve facing backward. Just gonna prop that against the little trigger or the spring mechanism. We're going to seat this, all right? And then release the pressure. And then, so we didn't quite get it seated properly. There we go. So you want, if you didn't get it right, you'll feel it. You want to make sure you're feeling the spring, the push. Boop, boop. So now that is not latched in. What latches your trigger in is your, um, um, your needle. So tighten that down. Got my spring tightened down. We're going to release the needle chuck a little bit. Take our needle, come into the rear here, go forward. Now, as you clean, sometimes this can get stiff because there's there's some paint uh, debris that gets in there. So it's important to try and keep this as clean as possible, um, but it will happen over time. It's going to get a little stiff. So one of the things I will do, I'll push this forward and I'll go boop, 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 a little tap. Don't press too hard. You don't want to bend it, but I give it a little tap, tap. And that's, you definitely, it's seated forward. You're not ramming too hard. Then we'll tighten that down. Again, hand tight, doot, doot, doot. 
you know, you're not having to crank it too hard. Get this. Boop, boop, boop. And then functionality test, make sure the needle goes back. It does, trigger presses. We'll grab our hose, put it in. We're getting airflow. So that is uh, the intro to the airbrush. That is the assembly disassembly, at least for the Patriot 105. Um, let me show you some quick differences between this and one of the chromes. So uh, because I'm gonna switch airbrushes, um, good habit to get into, disconnect, loosen the chuck, needle back, tighten the chuck, no needle. I also have the cap, but if you don't, especially pull the needle back. So we'll set it down. Now, this is because I'm also not paying a lot of attention, but if I was to catch this in my arm, sling it off the table, needle gets bent. And I've done this. I'll tell you from experience, I've done it. So let's grab our Renegade here, and we'll show you some slight differences. The needle cap is different here, or the nozzle. There's a small part in there. I don't want to take it apart because it can get lost, but that is different. Sometimes these may need a tool to get open. It's usually like a little wrench, but it's basically the same. Um, this apparatus is very similar. It's got a little finger kind of groove here, but inside of that is your um, um, air regulator dealio. Got your trigger. The disassembly is also the same. This is where things get different. It's got a crank back here, and the only thing different that this does, which again, other airbrushes do this too, you can set this to a, a certain uh, setting and that will restrict where the trigger goes. So I'll crank this all the way down and you'll see this going forward. Can't pull the trigger. We'll release that, be like five, see? And then we'll go all the way back. Trigger is, yeah, unrestricted. So what's happening is this goes forward and it hits the needle chuck and that restricts how far the needle can go. So if you want a consistent um, trigger pull every time and you don't want to overdo that in terms of the spray, you can set it. That's a setting I don't use that often. It's something that's more common for people who do like, um, like t-shirts or uh, really fancy airbrush work where they need fine lines consistently. Like they'll just push, pull, push, pull, and they'll get a, a smooth thing with miniature painting. You probably won't use that that often. This comes off the same. Needle chuck is the same. Your housing is the same with the exception of there's no ball here. Um, now, because the Badger's internals are all very similar, generally you can swap out some of the parts at the front with other airbrushes. Um, you could probably get a, a alternate nozzle put on here you could probably use with some finagling the similar needle from this by cutting off the ball uh, and modifying. So if you're into customizing tools to work for you, Badger can do some crazy stuff, um, but the main difference is no ball here um, with the needle. The other thing you'll notice is there's little notches here, and that's a, a quick way to identify what size needle you have. I think these both have the same. They don't. So this is a one, this is a two, uh, I believe this has got a finer needle in it. Um, I think that's the identifier. Um, so that helps you identify what needle is in your airbrush, right? But otherwise, the, the internals, the takedown, the assembly is identical on this one. And before I um, wrap up with this, because um, I could show you, I'm going to show you some quick uh, um, information on how to actually run the, the fluid and stuff through that. I'll show you an alternative um, couple of airbrushes here that have um, similar setups so that you, you understand what I'm talking about here. So first of all, we've got the, uh, this is the Creos something or other. I don't use it very often. Uh, uh, PS289, same kind of crank in the back, right? Trigger press and pull, press and pull. Um, protective dealio here, nozzle. Uh, this one's got a regulator so you can restrict airflow. Quick detach, same thing with the regulator. Cap comes off. Same kind of thing, needle chuck, needle. Um, this is gonna pull out your internals. So basically the same exact kind of mechanics, right? Boom, okay. Um, and if you're going super high end, and this is not me trying to like flex and show my stuff, it's more me wanting to show you that like my low end airbrush, uh, this one is exact same roughly how it functions with the other ones. So here's our evolution. Right, and then here is a Harder and Steinbeck. Uh, the other Harder and Steinbeck, this is the Infinity. Um, these are a little bit different, um, but trigger pull, push pull, push pull. This one doesn't have a regulator on the back to, or a restrictor. Same thing, needle chuck, needle. This one even has the little notches on it so you would know what size needle's in it. 
and there you go. And then this one's gonna be very similar. This one's got a restrictor to stop how far it will go back, right? Uh, and this one clicks, so you can click it. Actually, do I have to go backward? There we go, so it's clicked. Hang on, did I click it too far? Hmm. There we go. All right, so I had it to choke too far forward. So like that restricts the needle, and then I can just um, pull back and it clicks. So click forward, restrict, pull back, unrestricted. So it functions, that functions a little differently than um, the, uh, the Chrome, but otherwise doing the same exact thing, same kind of trigger, um, got the same nozzle. This one is also unprotected. It's got a prong, but you could bend that. This is gonna come off. Same thing, needle chuck. You've got the ridges to let you know what size needle. Um, and then you would uncrank here, uncrank that, pull your needle out, pull the internals out. And you can notice this has got this little rocker arm, which is what allows you that fluid kind of rounded motion for the trigger. Very similar to the Badger. This is just like precision engineered German stuff, which is fine. Um, this is not necessary uh, for your painting needs unless you really want to spend the money on it. So uh, I have shown you six different airbrushes and three from different brands from Badger. Internal mechanics and how they function is the same. It's worksmanship, uh, price, quality, that kind of thing. Um, I think this is the way to go. So let's go ahead and uh, crank this up. Okay. So we got our needle isn't forward. Um, so a couple of things you're gonna notice um, when you start airbrushing. First of all, if you're putting un airbrush ready paint in here, straight paint. If I grab this bottle of paint right here, this is not thin for an airbrush and I squirt, right? What's gonna happen is that paint's gonna go down into here. It's gonna try and get in here and it's not thin for an airbrush. So it's gonna get thick and gummy and it's gonna struggle coming out of the airbrush. So the way we combat that is to put our thinning solution in first. I'll put a little bit of this in. Um, I won't put the paint because I'm not gonna spray any paint right now. But we put some of this in first, right? Into the reservoir down there, a little bit more, right? Whoops, knock stuff over. And then, this is why in my previous video I mentioned having shop towels. Whoop. All right, uh, so you would squirt your paint down the side of the cup, right? And then you would use your paintbrush to mix on the side. So you're not shoving thick paint down here, you're mixing on the side. And as you're done, you take your paintbrush and you pull to the side like that and the paint rolls down the cup, and then by the time it's down in here, it's generally, not always, but generally thinned and ready to go. So that's one pro tip. I see a lot of people who uh, are new and they just they just squirt paint in and they don't realize that it, they're making a headache for themselves for cleaning later. So one of the other things that you'll, um, um, you'll see people talk about is backwash. So let me show you that. I've got a jug of water. Spray bottle is also good. So um, the needle on mine is not forward. So we're gonna go ahead and push that forward. Okay. So uh, the paint or the water was dripping out because the needle went forward and it was just falling out of the front. Um, I'm overly protective trying to, to prevent my stuff from uh, my needles from getting messed up. So we've got water in here. We're going to pull the needle back. It's important you pull the needle back first. So trigger back, cap the front. Uh, you can use paper towel your finger and then you press. And you see how that's bubbling. So what's happening, you can do that a little bit easier when you're not trying to hold this for a camera. That's why my fingers look weird. So what's happening is the air is being trying to go forward, it can't go, and it's forcing it up into the cup. So this is useful for two reasons. First of all, uh, if you are putting some thinner down in here and then paint on the side and mixing, you can then come in, uh, pull the needle back, cap the front, press down, and it'll shoot bubbles up in there. And you want to have the PSI low. If, it's, if your PSI is too high, you're going to shoot paint out of the cup. You don't want that. So you have to play a little bit. If you're worried about it, you can also like cap like that, right? So that's going to help shove any of the solution you had down in here up into the cup and mix it with your paint. You're forcing air bubbles, you're agitating, helping mix. And you'll see some of the uh, higher end artists that airbrush, they'll do that. They'll put it in, they'll backwash after they mix and they get a really nice mix in here and then they go. If you don't do that, whatever is in here that wasn't mixed comes out first. So your first few sprays are you using what's in here before the, the, the cup starts to get down. So that's the first thing you would use this for. The second thing and probably the most common thing is when you're cleaning your airbrush. So. I'll come in with a little bit of cleaning solution. 
I've got plenty in there, right? I'll use my paintbrush and we'll just swish. And then I will typically pull the needle back as well. So swish. This is me trying to help clean uh, uh, paint off the needle. And usually I will dump this first. It's clean, so I'm not worried about it. I'll dump this first so I get any big chunks or debris out first. You don't want to shove dry paint down in here. So swish, clean needle, swish. Or if you're going for a deep clean, pull the needle out. Um, but once you've done that, if you've got solution in here, you'll do this. And you notice it's bubbling. And then we'll spray the extra. And that's helping backflow paint out and circulate and agitate and help clean. And you can do that several times. You can spray, dump. And then one of the things I will also do uh, is grab my water bottle. Wrong water bottle. This is a pro thing to have around. And I'll just like that and dump, spray. Not on the desk. I'm doing this so you guys can see. I'll usually dump that in like a trash can or something. Um, but the water jetting through helps dislodge more stuff. So I do a combination of the spray bottle and the backwash to get this clean. And then at that point, we're good to go. Pull the needle back, um, hit the chuck, make sure it's not forward like this. And boom, airbrush is clean, ready to go. Now, uh, a couple of things before we wrap up today. Um, if you are getting bubbling right here around that, you can use a little bit of beeswax or uh, chapstick wax on the threads and that'll help seal this and prevent any air coming out. If you notice that on any of these, so like this seal or this one, you use a little bit of beeswax or um, um, chapstick. I'm gonna, <laughs> I drew a, a big blank there, chapstick. Um, and then down here, your Teflon tape is fine or, or your like plumber's tape kind of stuff. This, this stuff right here. That right there to seal these. So um, that's the, the common stuff you get, a little bit of bubbling um, and whatnot. So uh, to recap, we have covered the way these work, some basic maintenance and disassembly. Um, and as we end here, uh, I want to stress my two core things with airbrushing again uh, when it comes to uh, the actual tool. A, clean it. Do not let paint dry in it. Always clean it. You do not have to deep clean every time, but please, 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 Clean this out after each, set, each session. I promise you, you'll thank me later. There's going to be that one time where you don't clean it, and then you'll be like, oh, my God, this is what Justin was talking about. So please do that. Second, always store with your needle back. I promise you, the one time you don't do it and you knock this off your desk and bend your needle and you have to spend 15 bucks or something buying a new needle and waiting for it to be shipped and not being able to airbrush while you're waiting, you'll wish you did it. It is a good habit to get into. Store it safely, and that way it's not damaged. If you take care of your tools, they'll take care of you, and you'll spend less money in the long term maintaining it uh, or buying replacements if you maintain it properly. Finally, in closing, uh, my final thought with the airbrushing is that it's a little intimidating. People worry about the investment to get into it. Uh, you can probably get into airbrushing for around $200 if you, you shop some deals. Don't be afraid. You're also going to probably suck the first time you try this. You're not going to get better at it if you don't practice. So uh, if you're at all worried about it, give it a shot. See what you can do. And if you don't do well on the first model, do better on the second one. If you don't get it, do it on the second one, practice again and do better on the third one. As long as you're doing better uh, or striving to be better on your next project than you were on the first one and know that on your projects in the future, you're going to be trying better than the one you're working on now. You're making forward progress and that's all we can hope for. So don't be afraid of it. It's a hobby tool. It'll speed up your painting. It'll change your painting life. I promise. So that being said, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, hanging out with me today while we talked about airbrushing. Uh, this is my workhorse. If you're interested in picking one of these up, this is the Badger Patriot 105. Now, um, because I don't like to push products on people, uh, if you're interested in some alternatives, the Creos PS, I think it was 289 from Spray Gunner is not bad. I just don't use it often. Uh, I do not have an Iwata uh, Eclipse. It's been on the list of airbrushes to pick up to just try for years. When I was streaming, I had people ask me about it, and I've never used one. But I do know people in the community swear by it that use it. I just never have. So I think it's important to give you guys some options. If you want to use what I have and what I recommend, Badger, Badger Patriot 105 is very affordable. If you want to look into some other options, check out that uh, Creos PS289. I think it's what it was. Um, the Iwata Eclipse skip. I think it's the Neo skip that. I'm pretty sure it's like a rebranded low end for the Iwata everywhere I've heard. If you're getting Iwata, get the Eclipse. Uh, if you really want to go high end, you can't go wrong with the Harder and Steinbeck, the Infinity or the Evolution, but they're really, really expensive. For the cost of the uh, Harder and Steinbeck brush, you can probably get an air compressor and an airbrush and probably still have money left over. So um, 
if you're on a budget, uh, the Badger is probably the way to go. But I want to give you guys some options and let you guys make the choice that is uh, good for you. As always, thank you guys for watching this. If you have questions, thoughts, concerns, stories about airbrushing yourself, or you want to uh, pick my brain about something, sound off in the comments below. As I've said in previous videos, I think us coming together as a community and learning uh, is important. So you might share something that I didn't know, or I may share something in a comment back to you that you didn't know. So sound off in the comments below. Let's uh, let's get some chat going. Big shout out to uh, Robert from Fortress Miniatures and games who's uh, encouraged me to help get these videos going and helping supply models and uh, supplies for me to to make these happen uh, basically sponsoring the channel so if you're interested in picking up some Battletech stuff uh, maybe picking up some paracral paints or army painter stuff check out fortress miniatures and games he does not currently carry badger uh, but uh, he does carry paracral which is my paint of choice so moving forward hopefully i'll have some video tutorials coming at you if you have thoughts on things you'd like to see sound off in the comments below with that being said i've rambled too much today folks it's time for me to go as always keep painting those models keep rolling those dice and i'll catch you guys next time Thank mm -hmm. you.